Okay, picking up right where we left off, we had created this new database. We had created two tables. We had linked two of the fields together. We also limited what values could be entered into a couple of the fields. Now we really want to make this more user friendly because you really don't want the end users entering directly into the table. So click on blank form and a form opens up. We're going to clean up a couple of things like we've got the record selectors on the side here. So just like when we're modifying a table in the upper left corner here choose design view. Now I noticed that a couple of times this for want of a better term the canvas did not open up. If it doesn't open up it's okay once you start to drag and drop objects into the work area this should appear. I don't know if it was a one-off glitch or what but I just wanted to mention that in case you're using it uh, you're using um, your build of access for the first time. So what we'll do is we'll go to design and what we're going to do is we're going to click on property sheet. Now right now the sheet as a whole okay or should I say the form as a whole is what's highlighted. You can click away and see how the red dot went away so you can actually modify uh, the sheet as a whole, the form as a whole, or you can modify any one um, any one of these controls that we're going to put into the form. Now if you notice over to the right here you've got a property sheet. Okay, This gives you the properties, format, data, event, other, all, of whatever is selected. So if we click on the form itself we can make some changes. We're going to get rid of the navigation button. We're going to get rid of the record selector. We really, really, really want to control what they're doing with this form. For now, we're going to leave the border style as sizable. It really doesn't matter. Um, that's really one of the last things you're going to change. Okay. So let's save this. And we'll call this um, add underscore case because we're adding a new case. Click on OK. And now let's click on view. You can now see that the controls on the left and bottom are no longer there. That way they can't navigate because we want this just for adding cases. We don't want people navigating through the pre-existing cases. So go back to design. Now very important, on data, data entry says no. We want to change that to yes. That's what's going to allow us to by default to be on a new record. And for rec uh, record source choose ticket tracker table. That will uh, determine what fields can be put in here as well as what table is going to be modified. So we said we're going to do data entry. Yes, well where are we doing the data entry? We're doing it to this one, to that table. So, add existing fields. Just drag and drop all of them. Now you can either move with the mouse or once you have something highlighted you can just move the arrow keys, purely preference, whatever you like, to move just one of the um, objects you click on that control in the upper left corner. If you want to move them both then you just click on anywhere and they both move. I might jump ahead a bit, uh, depends how long this takes, but it's it's just, at this point, it's just um, dragging and dropping where you want the individual fields to be. Like, this is customer name, so I'm going to put these side by side. And again, it, it, it's arbitrary, it's purely preference, whatever you find, uh, the people doing the data entry, whatever works best for them, whatever makes sense to them. And this won't look really great when we're done because we're not really, uh, this really isn't a, uh, um, a tutorial to get into the details of layout. It's more uh, the broad strokes. It will function, of course, but it just, it won't necessarily be uh, that great looking. 
Oops, I accidentally hit delete. It's trying to hit the down arrow. Okay. Now we need one more thing. So if you point at the edge, you can actually extend out the canvas. And this one is a button. So click on that. You don't have to drag. Just click so it's highlighted. And we'll just make an outline of how uh, large we want the button to be. Now we usually don't use the wizards, but since this is a built-in function, no sense in reinventing the wheel. So record operator, and we want to save a record. Next, we want text, because you could choose a picture, we're not going to bother. Next, you can rename the object itself, and click on finish. And then it changed the size anyways based on the text we chose. Alright, so we're almost there. We're going to click on save click on view and now you have a form as you can see it defaults to a new uh, record and you can just start typing away so customer first name as you can see the case number auto populates and I'm just tabbing associate name date auto populates as well we had established that in the table case status say closed and then save record now if you notice the form didn't close so that's one more thing we're probably going to want to do so if we close this, uh, let's save the form, let's close it, and now if we go to Ticket Tracker table, there's the case we just entered. So it looks messy at first because we had to create the form, but now that the form is created, it's a much more streamlined process. The amount of data you're doing is really the same, but it's, a, it's much easier on the eyes. Uh, there's other things that can be done as well too. For instance, you can uh, shut off the ribbon, you can shut off the tables on the side here, or I shouldn't say shut them off, but you can really hide them, that way the end user doesn't see them. So there's a lot of ways to simplify the um, interface. So let's add one more thing to this. So let's save record. We also want it to close. So let's go into the macro and we want to add a new action that after it saves it we want it to close so so we want to close form Let's do close window, form, the name of the form is add case, do you want to be prompted for save, uh, nope because it's embedded into the save function, we save this, close it, and now in addition to saving it should also close, so we'll save the form, and we'll type in another name. and then save record. So this time the form closed. So it saved it and then closed. Now let's go back to our ticket tracker table. And there we go. And there's the record we just added. And although the streamlining of data entry is a very important and primary function of forms, 
The form also allows you to do other things such as have links out to external documents or maybe additional instructions. So let's go back to the form. Let's go to design and we're going to click on image. And we're just going to select where we want the image. And this is just an image I drew earlier. And it's a question mark. So over here for the property, for control tip text, if there's uh, certain instructions that need to be provided. So um, maybe uh, contact supervisor if theft is involved. Okay, so let's save that, go back to view, and this allows them to say point at it, and then as you can see you can now get a tooltip. So let's do an example of a link to an external document. So let's click on view, design view, click on the hyperlink icon. And I'm just going to navigate to where I put the document. There we go. And now we will just hyperlink, edit hyperlink, and this is the text display up here. So we we'll could just say type FAQ. So it's important to note, this is what's being displayed, but this is the actual address. And then we can just shrink that down to fit and move that next to the incident resolution. So now what you've done is you've created a built-in FAQ. So rather than having a whole bunch of clutter here in case they don't need it, you've just got a link that you click on this is just a typical office notification. And there you go, policy and procedure FAQ. So that's another advantage to using a form is that you can have all this supporting documentation if needed. Um, so okay, so I think that should do it now. And uh, if there's anything else you like added, just let me know.